All right, well, howdy and welcome. This is uh, Warpath here. We're here with uh, Brother John Partridge, Reverend Christopher Lesper here, and we get an opportunity to interview a good friend, a friend that's uh, been around a minute, as the kids say, so I won't steal much of his thunder there, but uh, John and I go back uh, go back uh, many moons, as they say, as well. Uh, I don't know. Does anybody actually say that anymore? Probably not. Uh, but that, that'll, yeah. show, that'll show our age a bit. So, <laughs> so good to have you, John. If you'll start us off, tell us a little bit about who John Partridge is. Well, I was uh, born in a very small town, grew up on a 200-acre ranch close to Gonzales County, uh, and uh, kind of had a typical ranch ranch life uh, growing up as a kid, and, uh, you know, kind of ran into some things that probably the reason, one of the reasons why I'm here, I, uh, I at a very early age, I found pornography in my dad's uh my dad's <clears throat> room and you know my my adventure began from there uh, kind of has continued on and uh you know probably about i guess it's a little over a year ago uh just kind of figured out i needed some help i've been trying to do this thing on my own and uh see as as we all know we probably had tried all the to do it on our own but Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that way. So uh, uh, at the time, I had been plugging into the uh, uh, podcast on Wednesdays and knew a little bit about Romans 12 through ministry just from that. And uh, I reached out to Christopher. And let me back up just a touch. Uh, prior, and one of the reasons that I, I did reach out to Christopher uh, was because uh, I got accused of a extra marital affair, uh, and for good reason because I lied. I did not have an extra marital affair, but uh, I did lie about a relationship with a female employee. Uh, no, no sexual things happened there, but uh, some things led to the fact that I just realized that I've got to conquer this demon. Uh, uh, that was in, that was part of me, and not only for myself, but for my relationship with my wife and my relationship with my my family, which included kids and grandkids. So a little over a year ago, I made the decision to reach out to Christopher. Uh, one of the best decisions that I've ever made uh, in this journey for this winning winning my heart back towards God and uh, fighting, uh, needing help to fight this battle and needing tools to help this ba fight this battle. So, you know, I eat Conquer Series, which I know all you got gone through. Uh, and of course, we're in Warpath. We're a little ahead of you all uh, from where you guys are. But, uh, you know, that's kind of kind of where we've, uh, where we started. Can you hear me, Chris? Yeah. Absolutely, man. And uh, yeah, to give uh, even more context there, like mid 90s time frame when we first met, um, he's an Aggie as well. We've got the uh, prosperity doctrine in our background. So network marketing and, and connecting there in the late 90s uh, into early 2000s. And then not a lot of contact uh, in that time frame. But then in the last 10, 12 years, been dove hunting on a regular basis. Uh, opening day is uh, is the day before his anniversary, uh, or is the day of? I thought it was. It's the day before, right? The day before. Day before. Day that's before, right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so, but but coming together and, and talking in these last uh, four four to seven years, uh, focused even more so on what's going on in the ministry, and uh, he's always asking and being you know inquisitive and, and what desiring to pray for the ministry and desiring to you know keep that relationship and dive deeper so um uh you know that that gives you some more some more background landscape wise as well with his landscaping business then some connections there some mutual friends that we have i think we ran into each other at the uh, uh, uh john eldridge came to speak over at uh, shoreline uh, that was uh, back right. in 17, 18, I think, time frame. So some intersections here and there. And then when the, like you already said, proverbial crap hit the fan there, it's like, okay, I need to, I'm going to do something here, maybe a little different, and uh, and reached out. And we had 
a much different conversation then than we've had in all those other previous times, right? Um, right. <clears throat> and like you said, that was a start. Right. And, and you weren't necessarily, it wasn't like, you know, okay, I, I may need this, I may not, I'm not sure, you know, I, I just know I need something. And I was like, man, absolutely, it may not be your issue uh, per se, but, you know, we, we've got some, uh, you know, the neuroscience and the background and the wounds and the development and those kind of things that you and I have a similar story with some of our interactions with our dad and background. So that was part of what helped, um, you know, spur you on as it well, as it were. I mean, spirits guiding all this. So glory to God and all of it. But th that interaction, I wanted to, to focus in on a bit because, you know, when we're when we're building this thing out and we're talking to others, there are, there are men in our circles that are right there, you know, uh, that are right there with us. We've built trust in different areas. We've built relationships in different areas. And then when the, when the spirit's timing is right, it opened a door and opened a door wide open. And then you stepped in and I don't know how long it was after that. I think we were still in the process of trying to get a group together, but you were on board for when we were going to launch. And then, then you came aboard for that uh, within a couple of months, I think, for the Conquer series there. At, uh, at Hill Country Bible, right? Correct, exactly. And, uh, you know, was plugging in with the uh, Romans, or with the conference calls on Wednesdays is, was, was real important because that's what gave me a foundation. You know, I, I knew Christopher, I, I, and known him, like I said, we've known each other close to 20 years. Uh, and during that 20 years, you know, the, the uh, relationship was, you know, in and out, uh, but like I said, the last 10 years, it was, you know, relation to probably contacting once a year. Hey, I'm a, can I come to uh, But that's kind of where the relationship built, you know, and it's definitely uh, God knew what was going on and knew, you know, what I needed. Uh, so that definitely had an effect on why I contacted him when I did. Uh, and that has been like I ever said earlier, one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Uh, went through the Conquer series, and you know we started Warpath, <clears throat> and just kind of to fast forward a little bit on Warpath. Uh, back in June the 29th, uh, I've heard Christopher say this many a time, and it, you know it's very biblical. Was the fact that uh, we as as a group as men every time we go online every time we we sin against our bodies by uh entertaining porn and masturbation uh we 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 basically crap on the holy spirit we we lose our spiritual authority uh we just turn it over to satan and when i finally heard him say it for the hundredth time probably is that we're giving up our spiritual authority it just clicked it, 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 it created a stake in the ground where I currently, <clears throat> it's been June 29th since I've uh, looked at pornography and masturbated. Uh, and it has just turned my life around. I'm starting to see some fruit with my marriage. Uh, we still have a long ways to go and we're committed to making that long journey. But there's definitely some fruit there. There's definitely been some uh, uh, some great things that uh, have happened. They've been micro changes uh, in my life, but they've been changes and they've been very noticeable. So that's been a huge blessing for me. And uh, you know, I, ha I owe it all to to God for one, but also to for me making some decisions, but also to the Romans 12 to ministry that. If I wouldn't have reached out to Christopher, I, at this point, a year later, uh, I probably would not be married, uh, be heading for a divorce or deep into it, uh, because my wife was just totally frustrated and, and put out uh, with, you know, my, my addiction. And, you know, I can't say enough great things about this ministry and the, and the men that lead this ministry. Uh, it, it, there's just not not any words that I can say that uh, you know Christopher and what he's done through through the Lord has saved a marriage, saved my marriage, saved my uh, you know I, I don't know. It just there's not words that I can say for my appreciation for uh, Christopher and, and the ministry that he started, 
and uh, I really appreciate uh, this opportunity uh, to give my testimony. It's uh, and I, uh, Christopher, did you have any other uh, questions for me or? Man, I just uh, appreciate you so much uh, coming on, and and we uh, this was the last minute. You know, this was something that you know you, you've uh, practiced a, a, a not much at all, right? Just a little bit, and you had you know a little bit of opportunity on the Wednesday morning calls, and I th you know that's that's a great spot to get to know the greater community, to make more connections, and thank you for being so consistent there and being willing to open your life up and. I can't say enough about your humility, your willingness to to transition from that, you know, with the spirit, you know, guiding this whole process uh, in that Conquer series to transition from, well, I'm not sure if this is really my thing, but I'm going to come anyway to, okay, this is actually, this is something for me. Um, you know, before you got to that spiritual stake at, at Warpath, right? Um, and right. I, I appreciate you getting there. But prior to getting there, right, there was this process, and you touched on it for sure, but there was this process of 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 sort of owning this, okay, this is this is an addiction. This is something that is gonna uh, gonna stay with me if I don't do something about it. And um, you were able to express that in a in a way on our one of the May May calls. So prior to the spiritual stake in late June, uh, there was this transition. Can you kind of take us back to that for you, how you got to that, to that spot and, 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 and move forward? Yeah. So as I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, I, uh, I got accused of a sexual, extra sexual marital affair. Uh, and that's really what drove me contacting Christopher because I, I had been living in a, in a lie I've been lying to my wife over and over and over, uh, you know, even getting getting fired from a job for looking at pornography on a company computer. Uh, that didn't even wake me up because, uh, you know, after a short period of, of freedom from there, I went right back to it. But, you know, the, the, the call came from the fact that I just... I was at my wits end in regards to what to do. You know, I've been trying and trying and trying to do it on my own. That's exactly what it was. It was trying, you know, we get a day or two and then go right back to the addiction, uh, trying to get more relief from whatever pressure that I was under at the time. Uh, I do own a business and sometimes the pressure can, can be pretty immense, but you know, we, we give it up to the Lord, uh, just continue to move forward. It, it, and when I made that call to Christopher, I was just, I just had to do something. And, uh, you know, the wife at that time was like, okay, well, here you go again. You're going to another Bible study. Because uh, at one time I would leave Bible study earlier, go to this particular job where I got fired. And, uh, you know, nobody was there. So I would go to this job and look at porn. Uh, and that's the reason I got fired. And like I said, that really didn't wake me up, but it finally took, after years of doing this, finally wake up. I don't know, is that what you're kind of looking for, Christopher? Yeah, you got us there earlier, like you said, but it was like in the Conqueror series, as you started to you know, come to your senses, as it were, and feel like that this, this, this was something that's gonna be for you, that you needed to dive mm -hmm. deeper in. You know we're in we're in the uh, episode twelve here. Where we're dismantling the lies, and um, and that process right. of going through the ten most painful events, and I know that yeah. that seemed to resonate with you on on a similar scale with me, and then identifying those lies, and 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 you know in the last few minutes here, uh, you know I actually got you know about two 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 three minutes left to, to to finish up. So you know you're going through that process of identifying those things, and it's keeping you it's getting it's, it's taking you deeper and deeper into this. And more and more yeah. responsibility was taken on your part versus the, like you said, the lying and the and the and the um, justification and the watering it down and the, you know it's well if my wife would do this or do this more then we'd be okay and and you were taking more and more ownership of why you were in that spot and and and, and perhaps you know how y'all have gotten there and it, it was going to be worth you know, all it had for you to, to, to dive in and find those lies, right? And replace them with the truth yeah. of God. And, and like you said, the, the, then, so then you moved into uh, Warpath and 
you know, and, and this, the spiritual stake was driven after, uh, where the, where the group is now they're in the episode 12. And I think, what are we on episode 18 or 19 now? Um, so, yeah. uh, so what, what, you know, as we, as we, uh, uh, transition out here, what, what are, what's some advice for these guys? Cause you're, you're celebrating what, 75, 76 days now of sobriety. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, you know, 70, uh, let's see, what, 72, 74 days at this current, current time. And, that, so, uh, and that's from that marker, you know, and, and I, if you would maybe, right. you know, transition us out by that focused, you know, okay, you talked about that spiritual authority and how much that meant to you, but juxtaposition that or contrast that to where you were before, because you've had day, you know, you've gone 30, 40, 50 days before, and sometimes you've gone years before in your past. But why is it so, you know, you mentioned the spiritual authority convicted you so much. Why is that so different? And why does that mean so much to you now? And and what do you, right. you know, aim to do, continue here and, and advice for these guys going forward? Right, right. Well, you know, the first thing is I started, I stopped lying. Uh, that was probably the first thing I realized that the lies just were making things worse. You know, it's just, you know, that old proverbial kicking the can down the road. Uh, so I, I drove a stake, you know, prior to the stake on June 29th, I drove a stake and said, I'm not going to lie anymore. Uh, because that's just hurting me. It's hurting my wife. It's hurting my family. It's hurting my relationship with God. So, you know, we drove a spiritual stake in, so we ain't going to lie anymore. Uh, but the, the, in their, in their, what we're going to do moving forward is, you know, I'm so scared now of losing that spiritual authority. I mean, it's, it, it, it drives me, you know, when I have a thought, uh, I know Christopher, when I, when I did the, I think I did a little over 30 days and that was a white knuckle. I mean, it was just, you know, I was getting attacked daily, uh, was getting, uh, I mean, bombarded with thoughts and of, you know, go, let's go look, Hey, let's go check it out. Well, you know, after, 30 days or so, I just finally gave in. And uh, I went to a, uh, a, a little class reunion and had a little too, you know, had maybe a beer or too many and was driving home and you know, I was kind of falling asleep. So I put on some porn. This is the last time I acted out or right in that range uh, to keep myself awake. And, you know, when I got home and that's, uh, you know, I acted out. So, after that period, it's like, okay, I just, that's when it just hit me. I drove that stake in the ground, uh, made the decision that this is where I'm going. I'm not going back to that anymore. And to be honest with you, when I drove that spiritual stake in the ground, not saying I haven't been tempted, but I will say the temptations are far less. Uh, it really has kicked Satan out, but it's also given me the power to say no you know one thing that i do is i speak to it when, when that urge comes on or when that temptation comes on you know i tell it to go back to hell i speak to it i talk to it you know i talk to it, it's like it's a, a third person yeah. that you know you can't have me you can't go you can't go after this this is not yours anymore I am a man of God. I'm, I'm spiritually connected with God. And this addiction is not part of God. And I just had to move forward. I can, you know, it's like I get disgusted with myself if I even think about that. You know, if I see something on TV, I turn my head now. I, if I, I see a, a, you know, an attractive person, then I, I turn my head. I walk away. I turn around. You know, my wife and I go to a restaurant. I sit in my, with my face to the wall. I don't want to see what's behind me. I want to see what's in front of me, which is my wife. And that's who I love. And that's who I'm connected to. And that's who I'm going to be connected to for the rest of my life. I'm done with this crap. Now, that doesn't mean it's over. That I still have to be involved. I have to still be connected with God on a daily basis. Because as Christopher always says, we're one or two, three decisions away from being right back where we were. And I know I'm that way. I know I can go that just this could turn on a dime. So we have got to keep moving forward. We've got to keep doing what God's calling us to do. And Warpath is part of that process for me. 
And if you win, and you guys, if you're here, it's hard for you too. And there is freedom, man. You've got to find that spiritual stake. That's something that just drives you to stick that stake in the ground and make this decision to turn from this crap, from this garbage, from this nonsense, from this hellacious life. Yeah. We've got to turn. And sorry, I'm getting a little fired up here. Can you hear me? <laughs> I love it, man. You're good. Come on. All right. I still got you. Well, there you are. There you go. There I am. So, man, it's uh, it's been the last you know 70, 74 days have been been awesome. You know, the the feeling, the freedom has been great, uh, and and it's for it's it's there for all of us. You know, I mean, Christopher's got you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of days, and you know, just that freedom, the the clarity, the fog that's gone from your brain. You know, just you can feel the rewiring of your brain. Like I said, though, I'm just I'm one or two decisions away, so I've got to stay into this. I can't let up, even though I've you know I've got some sobriety, I've got some freedom, but it's still a battle day to day. But it it does seem to get easier. Solid man. We let up. You did it. We let up. It's you, coming back. That's right, man. Appreciate you, brother. Spot on, man. And I, I, I can, I can see you uh, in your own one-on-one -on -one time, telling that sucker to go back to hell. That's right. That's good, man. Yeah. So keep it up. We're fighting farmers for a reason. We we can get fired up for a doggone pigskin game. We can get fired <laughs> up about our spiritual authority. Amen. So right. come on. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. Well, love you, man. Thank Amen. you for coming on. And again, appreciate you sharing from your heart. And uh, and 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 look forward to continue to battle right alongside of you, brother. All right, brother. Thanks, Christopher. Thanks, guys. Love you all. Bye-bye.